Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar hosted by ACB. The title of today's talk is Visualize Your Research Breakthroughs with RNA Scope Multiplex Fluorescent Assays. We'll first start uh, with introducing RNA Scope technology, followed by describing the different types of fluorescent assays that are, are currently available and all the essentials for getting started. Then we will focus on troubleshooting tips and present some in-house fluorescent data. Finally, end the presentation with fluorescent quantification and FAQs. RNA scope is a novel in situ hybridization yeast technology with unique probe design that allows simultaneous signal amplification and background suppression to achieve single molecule detection in a single cell level while preserving tissue morphology. RNA scope assay works virtually for any genome, any gene, and in any tissue. RNA scope assay allows either fluorescent or chromogenic labeling, and it is compatible with a variety of sample types, including FSPE, fresh frozen, fixed frozen, um, as well as culture cells. In today's webinar, we'll be focusing on fluorescent assays. Here is an overview of the RNA scope workflow. The RNA scope assay starts with permeabilizing the sample with protrument kit in order to unmask the target mRNA and allow the target probe to penetrate into the cell to hybridize to the target RNA sequence. Once the target probe binds to the target RNA sequence, detection is enabled through an amplification cascade that involves sequential hybridization steps to build up a tree-like structure shown here, which I will describe in more detail on the following slides. RNA molecules can be visualized under the microscope as punctic dots, which can be quantified semi-quantitatively or quantitatively by using image analysis software. The key feature of the RNA, techno RNA scope technology is the double ZZ probe design. Each Z contains three elements. The lower region of the Z is an 18 to 25 base sequence that is complementary to the target RNA. The upper region is a 14 base tail sequence. A spacer sequence links the two components of the probe. The probe always works in pairs as a double ZZ. The double ZZ probe contains the target specific binding site that is a 50 base long, and the upper 28 base is the pre amplifier binding site, and it is where the amplific amplification cascade occurs. With a standard probe design, the target probe set is a pool of 20 ZZ oligo pairs, and it binds to a 1 kb RNA target region. Once the double ZZ probe binds to the target sequence, the building of the amplification tree starts with pre-amplifier and amplifier binding. Each amplifier can further bind um, to multiple label probes. If only one Z binds to the target sequence, the amplification tree cannot be built, and therefore no signal will be detected. So this ensures the specificity of RNA signal amplification. RNA scope fluorescent multiplex assay allows simultaneous detection of three RNA targets within a single sample using three target probes, each optimized for a different probe channel, C1, C2, or C3. To date, we currently have over 1,200 peer-reviewed publications 
using the RNA scope technology. They have shown the increase in market adoption of the RNA scope assays utilized in many different research and application areas. Moving on to which RNA scopes multiplex assay is right for your research. Currently, we offer two types of manual multiplex fluorescent assays, and it is, this is also available on the Leica automation platform. RNA scope fluorescent assay, also known as our first generation assay, is an all-in-one kit ideal for fresh or fixed frozen tissues, as well as culture cells. RNA-scope multiplex fluorescent V2 assay is a TSA-based assay, ideal for FFPE tissues, as well as for low-expressing target detection. Besides RNA-scope reagents from ACD, the V2 assay requires perkin Almer's proprietary ceramide signal amplification technology for visualization. Another, another major difference is that the V2 assay is capable of detecting up to four targets simultaneously by using OPO dice. Therefore, if you are interested in studying co-expression or co-localization of four targets, the V2 assay is definitely the right choice for you. The Leica automated multi multiplex fluorescent assay is similar to the manual V2 assay. It also uses the TSA amplification in order to provide a high signal to noise ratio and it's compatible with FFPE and fresh frozen sample. Here is the workflow of fluorescent multiplex assay. The total runtime is about six hours from sample pretreatment to conistane and mounting. Please note that at the M4 step, you will only need to choose one of the M4 odd options, either the odd A or B or C. I will explain in the next slide about how to choose which one to use. Each M4 odd option is a cocktail of four fourths. Choosing M4 odd options depends on which color you would like to visualize your signal in. For example, if you are using M4 odd A, your C1 channel probe will be visualized in Alexa 48 channel, C2 channel probe will be in Auto 550 channel, and then the C3 probe will be in the Auto 647 channel. The different odd option will provide customers the flexibility to switch the color around. With the same probe setting, you will be able to visualize your target signal in different floor four channels. This table summarizes our recommendation on how to assign probe channels based on target expression level. Here is an example of successful stainings using positive control probe and fluorescent multiplex assay. This slide shows the V2 assay workflow. With the FFPE sample, you will need to perform the heat-mediated target retrieval step followed by protease treatment in order to allow the probe to penetrate into the cell and hybridize to the target sequence. Once completing all three AMP steps, each channel is developed individually, and then HRP blocker is used to block the residual HRP from the previous channel. Please note that although the current workflow here um, shows flu fluorescein size 3 and size 5 TSA plus fluorophores, are used for C1, C2, and C3 channel respectively, you may mix and match the four fours for each channel with the V2 assay. If you are working with only one or two targets, 
you may stop the assay after the first or the second channel is developed, then proceed to counterstain and mounting. However, regardless of how many targets you are detecting, all three amp steps are required to amplify the signal. If skipping any of these uh, amp steps, you will not be able to see any signals. Since the total runtime is about 14 hours with the V2 assay, we recommend stopping the assay after probe hybridization. We recommend leaving the slides in five times SSC at room temperature overnight. Since the green channel tend to have high tissue autofluorescence, we recommend assigning high expressing targets in the green channel and leaving the low expressing targets in the size three and then size five channel. Here is an image showing the V2 assay is capable of detecting four targets simultaneously. The Leica Multiplex Fluorescent Assay has a very similar workflow to the manual V2 assay. The only difference is that it is a fully automated assay and have very minimal hands-on time. If you are starting this assay on the Leica automated platform as a new user, our FAS will be on-site to help you set up the protocol and provide training. Next, we will discuss the details of how to get started. Please first follow the protocols exactly as described in the user manual, which can be downloaded from our website. Secondly, please make sure to follow sample pretreatment recommendations for your sample type. It is very important to always use control probes and slides and last but not least, please make sure you have all the required materials before starting the assay. The reagent kit comes from ACV, comes with three subkits, including pretreatment reagent detection kit, as well as wash buffer. Please make sure to warm 50X wash buffer at 40 degrees C for 20 minutes if you notice a precipitation. Arniscope fourplex ancillary kit is required if you are planning to detect four targets with the V2 assay. Besides reagent kit, you would also need to have threeplex positive and negative control probe. The positive control probe is used to assess sample RNA quality and also to confirm whether the current assay condition is optimal for signal detection. If negative control staining is clean, we are confident that the target staining is specific. To detect your gene of interest, please check our cut lock online first. Currently, we have more than 13,000 probes in our cut lock. If you are working with any novel gene and no cut lock probe is available, please feel free to contact your area account manager or go to our website to get your custom probe design feasibility test started. To run the V2 assay besides reagent and probes, from ACV, you would also need to order full force separately from Perkin Elmer. Please make sure that these are available to you before starting the assay. These two tables summarize the color numbers and recommended dilution. Please note that you will need OPPO dice if you are running fourplex assay. Here is a checklist of some important items that are a must-have for success with RNA scope assay. 
All this information is also available in the user manual for your future reference. Here we have some recommended accessories. To the left are two options for washing and handling slides. You may use either the Tissue Tech wash tray common in most labs, or you can use our Easy Batch slide holder, which was designed to streamline your RNA scope assay and save handling time when working with a large uh, number of samples. The Hype Easy hybridization system to the right is highly recommended since it is designed to maintain the perfect temperature and humidity to ensure optimal and consistent RNA scope staining. Below are two methods for performing the heat mediated target retrieval step. You may choose to boil the target retrieval buffer in a beaker on a hot plate or using steamer. Please note that if you choose to go with the hot plate method, the slides are immersed directly in the buffer as shown in the picture. Here are some tips and tricks to take note of when running the RNA scope assay. To highlight a few, please make sure to apply all the AMP steps in order because all the components are required to build amplification trees. Also, do not let the slides dry out as this may lead to potential background. Again, this information can be found in the user manual for your future reference. In the next section, we will share some troubleshooting tips for multiplex fluorescent assays. For fluorescent multiplex assay, we recommend using fresh frozen samples. Secondly, the C1 channel probe is ready to use, whereas the C2 and C3 channel probe comes in 50X concentrated format. To make a threeplex probe mixture, please make sure to mix your C2 and C3 probe 1 to 50 dilution with your C1 probe. If C2 and C3 channel probe is used alone, please use probe diluent in place of C1 channel probe. For the best signal detection and preservation, please make sure to use pull-on gold to mount your slice. The V2 assay is recommended for SFPE sample and for low expressing targets. And it is capable of detecting up to four mRNA targets in a single tissue section. Please make sure to order either the TSA plus fluorophore or opodice from Perkin Elmer before running the assay. Again, pull on gold mounting media is recommended for best signal results. FFP samples um, tend to have inherent autofluorescence. In this case, we recommend running multiplex fluorescent V2 assay since adjusting TSA concentration would allow us to achieve a higher signal to noise ratio. Also, please make sure to assign high expressing target in the green channel and also make sure to use multiplex, sorry, to use multispectral imaging software for background subtraction. Protease digestion is critical for getting optimal staining with RNA scope assay. Since tissue over digestion can cause autofluorescence, which may mask target staining. Therefore, please follow the user manual exactly as described and use the recommended protease concentration condition per your sample type. If you are working with SFPE sample and observing tissue detachment, 
we suggest to add a baking step before H2O2. Or if you are observing tissue coming off from the slice after protease treatment, also add an additional baking step before that. Both baking steps are done at 60 degrees for 30 minutes. More commonly observed sample detachment issue is with fixed frozen tissue. We recommend to dry slice at minus 20 for two hours after cross-sectioning, and also add a baking and post-fixation step before H2O2 and target retrieval step, since we have found majority of the sample detachment happens during the target retrieval step. After trying the above steps, one to three, if you are still observing tissue detachment, we recommend to skip the target retrieval step and extend the protease time to 45 minutes. Also, please feel free to contact technical support and then we will be happy to help you to figure out the best troubleshooting path for this issue. To resolve tissue detachment issue for fresh frozen sample, we recommend to extend fixation to one hour and bake slice for 30 minutes at 37 degrees C before protease. Another common issue is seeing no or weak signal. To troubleshoot this issue, please make sure to check the future setting and image acquisition setting, and also double check if you have performed all the AMP steps. Another possible root cause could be compromised sample RNA quality or suboptimal pretreatment condition. In this case, we recommend to run threeplex positive control probe to assess your sample RNA quality and to follow the recommended pretreatment conditions for your specific sample type. With any new samples you are working with, we always recommend running threeplex positive control to check the RNA quality. Here is an example of the expected positive control staining in each channel when sample RNA has been preserved well. Microscope and image acquisition plays an important role in the success of RNA scope fluorescent assay. This slide summarizes our recommended future setting for fluorescent multiplex assay. Here is our imaging recommendations for the V2 assay. For fourplex assay, for fourplex assay we recommend using multispectron imaging system. In-house, we use nuance. One of the most commonly asked questions is, can I combine the RNA scope-ish with IC or immunofluorescence? And the answer is yes. Both procedures do have a very similar workflow shown here that requires sample fixation pretreatment to unmask your RNA or protein and subsequent detection. So for each IC dual staining, we recommend running multiplex fluorescent V2 assay. As compared to the fluorescent multiplex assay, the V2 assay signal is more stable due to the TSA signal development and it survives better after subsequent IC procedure. Secondly, we recommend running RNA scope assay first, followed by IC. Next suggestion is to optimize the IC assay separately using the RNA scope pretreatment reagent to ensure your protein can still be detected following RNA scope pretreatment. RNA scope requires the protease digestion to unmask the RNA, so do keep in mind as you optimize your IC assay. 
Lastly, the dual HIC assay works better for highly expressed proteins due to the protease treatment, which may diminish your protein expression to some degree. If you notice protein detection becomes weaker after combining with RNA scope assay, you may try increase your antibody concentration. We do have detailed technical notes available on our website. If you have further questions regarding HIC, please do feel free to contact technical support. Here is an example of dual HIC staining using IDO and PDL1 probe along with CD8 antibody to study the tumor macro environment. Multiplex fluorescent assay is commonly used in neuroscience research. Here, we show that we are able to detect different cell populations simultaneously in the same section of normal mouse brain. For many GPCRs, there are either no antibody or no reliable antibodies available, so detection of GPCRs in the tissue can be limiting. With RNA scope assay, we are able to detect two distinct neuronal populations marked by DRD1 in red and DRD2 in green in the striatum. We also examined detection of GPCRs in the hippocampus using RNA scope multiplex fluorescent assay. Here are some more examples of GPCR detection in normal mouse brain. Next section is the guidelines for fluorescent signal quantification. We usually have customers asking, what does a dot mean? Uh, what is the significance of dot size? What is the difference between a dot and a cluster? With RNA scope assay, mRNA molecules are detected as punctic dots, and each dot represents a single copy of mRNA. When multiple copies of, a, of your gene of interest are detected, the overlapping signal will form a cluster. This image here has clearly shown the punctic dots pointed by the yellow arrow, whereas the red and the green signal clusters pointed by the red arrow here. Since the dot size depends on the number of ZZ probe bind to a target molecule, we recommend quantify signals based on the number of dots rather than dot size. With the semi-quantitative approach, one would score the sample based on the number of dots per cell. This table here shows our semi-quantitative scoring guideline. Alternatively, you may use image analysis software to quantify signals more quantitatively in-house, we use HALO software, which enables automated signal dots and cell detection and provides output data in a format of average number of dots per cell and percentage of positive cells. To learn more about RNA scope fluorescent image analysis, Please feel free to check out the listed resources on our website. If you would like to know more about HALO software, please contact Indica Labs directly.
in the last session, here are some frequently asked questions. First, which amps should I use to develop each channel? Answer is please use all the amps provided in the kit. Amp reagents serve to build amplification tree. If any amp is skipped, it may result in no signal. Second question, how can I avoid bleed through in the V2 assay? Answer is use optimized filter setting. Also reduce the TSA concentration and reduce exposure time. Third question, how do I distinguish signal versus autofluorescence with fluorescent multiplex assay? The answer is to assign high expressor in the Alexa 488 channel and use multispectron imaging system to subtract, to subtract background autofluorescence. Question number four, how can I run C2 and C3 probe alone? Answer is, um, please um, use the probe diluent in place of C1. Question number five, if I'm working with FFP sample, which fluorescent assay is right for me? The answer is multiplex fluorescent V2 assay or Leica multiplex fluorescent assay. Next, can I perform HIC dual staining? The answer is yes. Please refer to the earlier slides for more detailed recommendations. The last commonly asked question, why did, why did my C2 and C3 probe come in smaller volume? The answer is since the C2 and C3 channel probe is in 50X concentrated format, and then you need to dilute them in 1 to 50 dilution before use. Finally, please take note of our technical support contact information. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or if we can be of any assistance.